Hello, I'm Giovanna Tejak. I am at Center for Devices at the FDA, and I'm also a member of Precision FDA team, and I would like to introduce Dr. Uh, my name is Taha Kashut, and uh, I'm FDA's Chief Health Informatics Officer, and today I'm here to um, chat uh, about the evolution of Precision FDA. So can we start with just you telling us what is Precision FDA? Yes, so Precision FDA is a framework that we built to allow the genomics community and um, the innovators out there in the field uh, to share data as well as software around next generation sequencing of human genome, uh, ultimately to uh, better understand th these methods as well as uh, start working on how we can best benchmark uh, these, the software to uh, assure uh, the accuracy and reproducibility of these tests uh, for patients and clinicians. Now, is this a kind of self-standing platform or is it a part of some bigger initiative? So the way uh, Precision FDA started is uh, it is part of President Obama's um, uh, Precision Medicine Initiative. It's also a, a small part of the FDA's role in Precision Medicine Initiative, but a critical role because we focus primarily on building the community that ultimately will crowdsource reference material that will be used uh, to advance regulatory science and ultimately regulation in, in data and data and evidence-based approach. So can you describe a little bit more about what is this platform about? Um, so platform is, um, uh, uh, we have now a growing community. We, um, uh, we went live in uh, December of 2015 uh, we're about five and a half months uh, sort of young, where we have over 1,500 members worldwide uh, representing over 600 organizations. Uh, this community really is working uh, towards advancing the uh, regulatory science, uh, sort of the science behind um, um, uh, the assuring the accuracy of the next-gen uh, uh, software uh, for human genome. Um, and um, uh, and to do that is we want to provide an environment where they can um, uh, share uh, some of the, the the innovations happening in this field as well as any reference material they might have. We made available publicly prior publicly available material to available to everybody. Uh, we also realized that uh, there are several members in the community that need, uh, sort of uh, the computation uh, platform to help them do the sort of like this um, heavy crunching um, um, uh, environment. So it is a cloud-based uh, secure environment um, that uh, you can uh, make available to create new software or test uh, your software on a platform, uh, compare your results with others, uh, benchmark against uh, some reference material might be available, contribute back to that reference ma material, uh, be able to to borrow uh, uh, you know a software from someone else and further enhance on it and ultimately maybe share it back uh, with with the community. So we have this sort of uh, social uh, considered social experiment of advancing regulatory science behind next gen sequencing. So you mentioned the community and the members. So who are the members? What groups are the members? Uh, so far, what we've seen, um, we have large representation of uh, the genomic community, which we're really, really happy about. We also see new members, sort of like not the typical audience. So we do have um, software developers uh, who are really interested in advancing the methods in this field. For example, the machine learning and, and artificial intelligence uh, required for uh, mining the data to uh, be able to map against a reference or call uh, a variance or be able to reduce the bias or address biases and whatnot in, uh, in the calls. We also see a lot of academics uh, on the platform um, uh, in addition to uh, g genetic um, um, uh, test creators as well as uh, laboratories, clinical labs, um, uh, pharma and, and other members of the industry, uh, some even device uh, manufacturers who have interest in uh, introducing uh, next-gen sequencing uh, software as part of the uh, test kits and whatnot. So it's wide representation of, of the community. I would say about also one-third of the community members are from outside the United States, which is really amazing to see um, how the global community is coming together and they are contributing both data as well as software and also help us build the, the software of Precision FDA. So is everything that you were talking about people sharing on Precision FDA, is everything public what they share or? 
So, so to respect the uh, ownership, um, uh, which is you know something that was came uh, came to us from the community, the ownership of uh, some of the apps or some of the software or the data, as well as you know the work, the research that's been done, uh, we created um, an area, a private area, sort of where you can uh, freely work in that environment and no one sort of sees what you, what's going on. Not even us, as we provide the environment, will be able to see that. But also there's a common or community area, and this is really where a lot of the sharing is happening and where we're seeing new reference material or software or discussions happening uh, around those. Um, the folks also who um, uh, don't have access to computation resources are finding this sort of approach uh, really amenable to them because they can innovate in this environment and have the freedom to decide what they want to share, when they want to share it, and uh, and uh, uh, and and be rest assured that you know that that information will always be secure and private if they choose to do that. And what are some of the the efforts? How do you get people to know about Precision FD and what they can do and engage them? Yeah, so I mean, there's been a number of ways how we reach the community. First of all, we identify that community members or users are different. For example, patients are different than clinicians. Clinicians are different than test providers. Test providers are different than software developers. So we, we're t tailoring to different audiences all the time. Uh, but we created a common ways about how we reach uh, to them. And anywhere, for anywhere from social media presence, um, to uh, a live really discussions that happen around Precision FDA. Uh, you know, you can email uh, Precision FDA and whatnot, and we've been really active about, you know, connecting with the community. Um, but we also added uh, really critical features to help the community first document their experiments. Mm -hmm. So we have like, for example, notes, uh, rich uh, um, areas also, for example, let's say you're contributing data um, that you, you might consider in re as reference material or software uh, as an app now, uh, similar to how you add an app on your like smartphone. So you'll be able to document all that and, and we provide all those features uh, so others can, can look at it. Uh, we have this forking uh, sort of almost like in GitHub, but more on the platform. Let's say you develop an app that I find, you know what, that might be useful in my pipeline. I want to go and borrow it or use it. Uh, if it's free of charge, then I can do it. If you have licensing behind, licensing behind it, you know, it will propagate. Uh, but I'll be able to take it and further enhance on it, and I might share it back with the community. Uh, uh, we have notes, almost like scientific notes, where you can document any experiment or anything you contribute to the platform so others can be able to, um, uh, to track that. Uh, we have audit training or provenance on the environment, so you'll be able to sort of like look at all the steps all the way. And finally, we have this discussion areas, and this is really where we have almost peer-to-peer -peer interaction. Now, um, the discussion areas have been really great for us because uh, one way to, pro to focus the crowd so to speak, um, so we issue challenges on a platform. Um, and that's really what's neat about this is that now you have a common area or common platform where you can test. Everyone is working on the same test to compare against um, and, and, um, and, and challenges to, 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 to answer to. And we found those discussion sort of features to be very, very helpful in providing those answers. And so far we have about two challenges on the platform. Yeah, that was gonna be my next question. So how many challenges and what were they about? Yeah, so, so far we have two challenges. The first challenge we called the consistency challenge. Um, it, it's really sort of like just getting your feet wet, so to speak. Uh, uh, we want to just kind of uh, work with the community uh, and ask them, uh, uh, pick a software of your choice uh, that you'd like to sequence a human genome, reference a uh, human genome, um, almost like giving you the quiz and answer at the same time. Uh, and respect that, you know, uh, you need to go through the steps to get to the answer, and then once you get there, you can, c you can compare your answer. Uh, but the primary, the primary focus was on consistency or reproducibility. Uh, so what we've done is we work with two uh, reputable uh, ma uh, labs, clinical labs, Garvin Institute and Human La uh, Longevity uh, Institute of uh, Craig Venter that donated sort of their characterization of the same human genome sample. And then we asked the community, why don't you do um, sort of consistency within one lab and then across labs? Um, and that really what sort of uh, uh, the reproducibility sort of challenge came about. And then once you do that, then the results of those, let's compare to a well-known reference that's been added by NIST, the National Institute of Science and Technology, uh, under consortia called the Genome in a Bottle. Um, and then whatever test results you have from the first sort of round of the challenge, compare those, and that will start 
um, sort of looking at the accuracy of, of your results. And based on that, we, um, we came up with sort of um, top performers for each of those categories and top overall performers. So were the, the top for performance for the ch first challenge already selected? Uh, yeah, we have uh, we have three top performers. Uh, one top performer of the consistency of uh, the reproducibility, and another top performer of the accuracy, and then the overall, which was also the first uh, top performer of the reproducibility. So how do we do? They get some award. How do how do you do? Yeah. So so um, you know, one thing we want to emphasize that you know there are no winners and losers on the platform. We really want to just kind of. Um, uh, spur innovation and spur sort of a fun uh, factor of let's all work together. You already know the sample, you already know the the uh, the, the reference material, but let's just see how these different pipelines for, uh, you know compare against each other. Um, uh, other efforts uh, you know in the past have tried to address this. However, you know when you don't have the answer, it's really hard to see like how accurate is your uh, is your test and one and which really sort of instituted why we came up with a second challenge called the truth challenge basically if we hide certain answers from you uh, let's see how um, uh, you know really what we will try to do with the truth challenge is, is get on ad addressing the bias in the pipelines and that's really what you know uh, we start to do in that so immediately after we close the first challenge uh, uh, we started the second challenge recently we announced the sort of the top performance of the first challenge and now we're working on uh, the uh, the answers of the f of the second truth challenge. So how how was the response? Was there many members? Yeah, I mean it was really a great. I mean not just the response, but also the um, the diversity of the answers and the submitters. I mean we have submitters from academia, from software developers, uh, from uh, clinical labs, from um, uh, you know uh, uh, pharma, uh, etc. The first challenge we had about sub uh, seventeen uh, submissions. Um, um, the second challenge, we had almost double those. We have 34 qualified submissions, which is really great. And, and as I mentioned, new uh, uh, sort of uh, players, especially in the software and machine learning um, uh, industry, in addition to clinical labs. Um, uh, and we hope to see that, you know, more of these challenges that can come over time. Um, the, the neat thing about the second challenge is, while in the first challenge we designed that, the second challenge we work with NIST as well as uh, Global Alliance for Genomics and Health, or GA for GH, um, to design the new challenge. Uh, as a result of that, we close the second challenge uh, on uh, May 26. Uh, immediately after that, NIST uh, put for the first time new reference material um, uh, on the platform, uh, which are the truths sort of said that we hid in the first place. Uh, GA for GH also contributed a new framework for comparison that we will use for the truth challenge evaluation of these different pipelines. Um, uh, so it's really great to see how you know uh, these challenges are evolving in ways that um, the community now started to uh, uh, propose those and work together uh, with us on those. And and we've received many ideas even from the submissions in the first challenge as well as the second challenge about new ideas, better ways. Uh, you know, even even people start saying, you know, uh, how my method compared to others, and this is what I've done. So people start sort of sharing their their, their recipes, uh, and uh, and many new ideas for for next uh, uh, for several challenges. Yeah. So next challenge. So I'm assuming there will be more challenges. Would Precision FDA accept challenges that were? proposed by somebody in the community instead of Precision FDA putting them together? Oh, absolutely. So uh, we already have a couple of those already posted on a platform. Um, the, uh, in addition to suggestions about the, the different framework for comparison. So as I mentioned, the, the software for o Precision FDA is open source. Um, uh, but we have also component being contributed to the community. So the first framework comparison came from real-time genomics. Now the second uh, sort of or additional um, uh, uh, framework for comparison came from GA for GH that allow us to get better resolution into the type of variants that we're calling, for example, you know, indels versus SNPs, um, look at, um, you know, different um, areas of the genome and, and whatnot. Um, but um, the new challenges will, will evolve and we already have new ideas that are being submitted and we hope to see more of those. So 
uh, I'm trying to understand whether this is uh, a research platform or regulatory platform because it's FDA, it's regulatory agency. So how does that fit? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a quite bold idea, uh, you know, for a regulatory agency to come up with a research sandbox uh, that's not a regulatory tool. However, what we're trying to do here is advance the science that will help with regulation. So regulation will be based on standards, based on benchmark, based on crowdsource, where the community agrees based on evidence where we should and how we should regulate. So in a sense that Precision FDA is not a regulatory tool, but it's a regulatory research tool that will help advance the science needed for regulation. So what are, what are next steps? There are many next steps. I mean, we're hearing a lot from the community about, uh, for example, maybe uh, some intended uses. For example, can we focus maybe on somatic um, uh, uh, area and figure out what reference material needed, what sort of samples are needed, you know, how software can compare, uh, to, uh, you know, how we can advance the software. Um, there's also some, you know, we want to always continue doing this benchmarking. We want to continue to evolve this benchmarking. I always, you know, to try to refer, um, you know, uh, what we're trying to do uh, with Precision FDA to what happened in Marketplace with Netflix, the Netflix challenge of the recommendations of videos uh, you should watch and whatnot is constantly evolving because of how the community start engaging in advancing those. And that's always continu uh, uh, continuous uh uh, sort of process. So we want to see more of those. Uh, we hope to see more reference material added, new reference material added. Um, uh, NIST is the first uh, to, um, you know, uh, to contribute that of new uh, reference material. We also uh, trying to see how um, the committee now will try to evolve this into uh, addressing real challenges. Uh, we identified in a research paper uh, around recently around the roadmap, strategic roadmap for next generation sequencing, about nine critical areas. Uh, uh, five of those are in the analytic validity and four in the clinical validity. I want also want to mention like how we're working closely with other members in the PMI initiative, NIH, uh, CDC, uh, Office of National Coordinator, um, and ways also how they're crowdsourcing evidence on the clinical side as well on, as on the meaning of these mutations or variants that we found. And there are ways right now how we can connect uh, to those. Um, one last area I want to emphasize also, ultimately we're trying to do this with one goal, which is assuring the safety and efficacy of these tests for patients and, and, and better interpretation for clinicians. Um, so patients and clinicians are part and start to become part of uh, the platform. And uh, we're trying to see ways about how they can also have access um, to this information around accuracy of these tests if the providers chose to share them. So you were mentioning different groups that are members of the platform. Do uh, are we interested in adding more members, different groups, more engagement, maybe? And how to go about? Yeah, I feel it. it the, the committee has plateaued. 1,500 members, 600 organizations. We probably have pretty much everybody who's interested in space. But we'd love to see more participation from clinical laboratories, and we already started seeing that in the second challenge. Uh, large clinical lab. Uh, participated in working together with software developers. There's plenty of software developers already contributing. We also would love to see more clinicians and, and, and physicians involved in Precision FDA because ultimately they're the people who are making these decisions and interacting directly with, with the patients. Um, all along from the beginning, we have patient advocacy groups have been part of the, the sort of the community, but we we'll also want to better understand uh, you know, their need of this sort of analytic validity phase uh, of the platform. Yeah, so it can maybe help software developers to understand wh where they need to go. Exactly, and also the clinical labs see new methods and new innovative ways, like such as machine learning and, and artificial intelligence, in a really awesome environment that's cloud-based can scale, is also how we can advance the science for that as well. I think it's, it'll be win-win environment if everyone can participate. Yeah, and they can play there, they don't have yeah. to. It's fun, as I said, it's, it's a fun sandbox. So, any last words? No, I mean, just like as I mentioned, please uh, come to the platform, uh, precision.fda.gov. Uh, we'd love to see you participate. Uh, there are more challenges. If you have ideas for challenges, please uh, submit them to us, as I mentioned, uh, on social media. You can email them to us, or you can start your own challenge uh, on, on the platform and invite the community to participate. Thank you very much. Thank you.